And now your host, Richard Thomas. Hello, and welcome to It's a Miracle. We're here in Greenwich, England for a special edition of Miracles from Around the World. And we'll be traveling far and wide for them, from Brazil to Australia to Italy. But first, a story that took place not far from here in Worcestershire County. This is typical English countryside, farmlands and forests dotted with rivers, lakes and canals. But what happened there was anything but typical. In fact, it was miraculous. Ross Davies and Darren Lines were on their way to a friend's house when they stopped to give Liam Coffee a ride. Wait, should we put your seatbelts on there? Yeah. Are we going straight over to Mike's, yeah? Yeah, we'll go straight there. The boys were looking forward to seeing the work another friend had done on his motorcycle, but they would never make it that far. They'd never afford the insurance on it. I was going between 35 and 40 miles an hour. As I went round the bend and lost control of the car, In the next instant, the car left the road and went over the bank, spinning in the air and landing upside down in a channel of water. Ross unfastened his seatbelt and pulled himself through the driver's window. By the time he surfaced, Darren was already on shore. But Liam was still trapped inside. I saw Liam and his hands managed to get above the door and just see his like, fingertips above the water. He managed to swim out the driver's door, same way I swam out, but he got his ankle caught in the seatbelt. The more Liam struggled to free his leg, the more panicked he became. Ross had to act quickly. The first thing I thought was to go down and give him mouth to mouth. Ross had received first aid training, but the techniques he'd learned were on dry land, not underwater. Still, he covered Liam's nose and began breathing into his mouth, praying the oxygen would keep his friend alive. Help! Someone help, please! Help me! Every five or six breaths or so, I kept shouting. And then he'd dive again to fill his friend's lungs with air. I said, no, I can't give up. I've got to save him. Help! Please! Help! And then Melissa Haggerty and Paul Brewer drive by. And then we came across a boy in the road. What's he doing then? You better stop him. As we got closer, I could see the shock and the fear. What's happened? My friend's trapped in the car in the water. Where is he? We're just down there by the All right, all right, don't worry. Help! 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 Oh, he's down there! He's down there, look! Well, I think that was one of the worst things, just his screaming. Help me, my friend! My friend's trapped, please! It had been ten minutes since the car entered the water. Help! What's happened? Help me! My friend, he's trapped! We'll get him out! Please! What can I do? Come on, get an ambulance! Please! please. please. Help! Where is he? Where is he? I thought that if we got him out quick enough, we'd be OK. We've got to get him out! Help! I can't get him loose. I reached under as far as I could and got hold of, got hold of the lad around his arms and tried to pull him clear. But his head was about two foot still under the water, so he was actually trapped. Come on! I thought there's no way. I thought he was going to die where he was. I scrambled up the bank to try and find something to open the door with. Luckily, he spotted a rowing oar nearby. Quick, hurry! And it just seemed to be lying there as if, as if it was laid there for the job like. Quick, yes, yeah, that's it. Quick, yes! Oh. We wasn't going to give up until we, until we got him out. By now, Melissa had arrived at the pub, instructing them to call an ambulance and enlisting the help of some of the locals there. Can you help? Make sure the ambulance is there, yeah? Uh. 
Nearly 15 minutes had passed when Paul finally managed to pry the door open. The young lad's face, when I pulled him free of the water, it was just like a corpse. It's too late. No, it's too late. No. It was like blue, lifeless, just eyes completely open. Come on, Come on Liam. Come on. Come on. They just got him out as we got there. I was just thinking, do something for crying out loud. Just do something for him. Come on, help him. Come on, quickly. I just massaged his chest. Was going to give him mouth to mouth, but I don't know how to do it properly. Liam had been under the water for so long that to revive his lifeless body would take a miracle. It's very hard to try and comfort someone when their friend's dying. What have I done? It's all right. It's all right. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You're all right. I think he was just blaming himself and had it set in his mind it was his fault and that's the end of it. I lost, I lost control. Calm down, calm down, all right? Just calm down. By now, two more vital minutes had passed. Yes, yes, come on. Yes. <coughs> come on, son, that's it. Coming round. All right. Yeah, all right. It was a miracle that he was coming alive. Good. What's your name? What's your name, son? Come on, what's your name? But I thought that he'd have serious problems. I thought he'd be brain damaged in some way because he'd been under there for what seemed forever. Moments later, emergency teams arrived, headed by Darren Deacon. The situation at the time was quite desperate. We didn't know how this young lad was trapped. All right, mate, whatever you're saying. All right, just stay, stay with us. His response level was low. He'd gone beyond the stage of shivering, which means that hypothermia is starting to set on. There was the possibility that he had taken some silt into his system. <coughs> I used a, a pair of shears that we all carry as standard right. to cut the seat belt. Right, won't be a minute more, just bear with us. Cut it through right. now, OK, all right. As they prepared Liam for transportation to the hospital, Everyone involved could not help but think that they had just witnessed a miracle. Dr. William Konarzewski explains. When people are trapped underwater, the five minute mark is a mark beyond which you'd expect very few people to survive, or if they do survive, you'd expect uh, permanent brain damage. <coughs> Instead, we had a young man whose mind appeared to be very much intact, um, and who didn't really appear to be that seriously ill. He seemed to be absolutely normal. He seemed to just be worried about his jacket. He didn't even want to go to hospital. I don't want to go! All right, all right. Ross! I don't want to go! Okay, we're taking you to hospital now. Liam was immersed in very dirty water containing bacteria and chemicals. These substances would have caused considerable irritation to the tissues of his lung and causing the lungs to get waterlogged. Hi, this is Liam, 16-year-old chap. Liam developed severe breathlessness, and that got progressively worse until we were forced to intervene. If Liam had not gone on to the ventilator, his lungs would have filled progressively with water. Uh, all his body tissues would have been deprived of oxygen, and one would guess that within an hour or two he would have died. When I walked in there and just saw the machines in the tubes, I just started blaming myself again. I started thinking, I've done this to him. Right, I'm really sorry, mate. Accidents happen. I'm really sorry. You can't blame it on anyone. It just, it's just one of those things that happens. I can remember the back of the car coming out, then hitting the bank, and the car overturning. Got to the halfway out the window and then the seatbelt caught around my legs. 
and then I started pushing really hard with my hands and that, trying to get out, and I was totally stuck. I felt someone swim down and grab my head, open my mouth, and blew air into me. Basically, just saved my life. How? I think that there is very little doubt that if his friend hadn't been quick thinking and uh, dived down repeatedly to fill his lungs with oxygen, that Liam would almost certainly have died or at the very best survived with a very badly damaged brain. Liam's recovery is, is amazing because he had recovered without any permanent physical damage either to his brain or to his lungs. He is, to all intents and purposes, exactly the same person who went under the water. He survived completely intact, which is a little short of a miracle. Thank you.